Which of our four teams will emerge as champs today? It's all a toss-up, next on Quiz Kids. It's the Bay Area Quiz Kids. Brought to you by the San Mateo Credit Union. And now, the best host on the West Coast, Brad Friedman. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to another game of Quiz Kids. We have two strong matches and four great teams today. Let's meet our first two teams right now. Over here, we have the Westmore Rams. <laughs> and in this corner, the Bellarmine Bells. Welcome, gentlemen. Let's get started right away with your first toss-up question. Good luck. For 10 points, its namesake served as Louis XIV's Marine Minister. North of New Orleans is southeastern Louisiana. In southeastern Louisiana is, is what large estuary known as a yes, nam it? Uh, Lake Pontchartrain. Yeah, that is correct. For 25 points, Lake Pontchartrain is technically not a lake, but an estuary connected by the Rigolette Strait to which large gulf? Mexico. Gulf of Mexico. That is right. And for 50 points, after crossing Lake Pontchartrain, Interstate 10 heads west and meets Interstate 12 in which city, home to Louisiana State University? Shreveport. No, it's Baton Rouge. Okay. Here's your next toss-up. In one scene of this novel, Razumikin claims that I am a man because I lie. In what novel does Raskolnikov eventually con- Yes, Jared. The crime and Punishment. That is right. For 25 points, Crime and Punishment was written by which author? Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky. Yes, and for 50 points, after Raskolnikov is convinced to confess, which daughter of Semyon Mamaladov follows him to Siberia? Natasha. Natasha. No, Semyonya. This man journeyed in a small boat to South Georgia to find help for his stranded crew. Who was this leader of a failed 1914 trans-Antarctic expedition? Namit. Shackleton. That is correct. For 25 points, Shackleton's crew set out for Antarctica. On what ship that was crushed by pack ice and sank in October 1915? Discover. Discovery. Endeavor. John Chi, your answer. Discover. Ironically, it was named the Endurance. <laughs> Let's take a moment and say hello to our teams. Welcome, gentlemen. From Westmore, Andrew, senior, and a piano player, but not the typical route. You started playing piano when you were around three years old, mm -hmm. and then stopped. So why didn't you just stay stopped? Um, I picked it up again after I stopped formal lessons, and then I found out that I could recreate a piece of music and match the pitch without using reference notes. That's very exciting. So you play for pleasure now? Yeah. Fantastic. Brandon, you're part of the debate team. I'm hearing this the last week or two. Debate teams are in again. What part, form of debate do you do? Um, I do parliamentary debate. Okay. And that's uh, two teams of two, and we get our topic 20 minutes before our debate begins. What was your last topic? Uh, military aid in the Middle East, I think. Ooh, we can't talk about that here right now. We've got too much game to play. Das Ball, you went to New York City over the summer and got a chance to get a taste of true New York hospitality. What happened? Right. Uh, so one day, uh, I just stopped for lunch at Chipotle, um, Fifth Avenue, I think. And then uh, I was just looking out the window into the city, and I guess the sky was in my view. And he thought I was giving him the stairs, so he swore at me through the window, through the glass. And then I didn't know how to react, so I just turned around. And ate uh, your burrito. Yeah. Welcome to New York. I was in the line, but yeah. Yeah, well, whatever. Sure. <laughs> Welcome. Don't look at people in the eye. Jarek, you are a member of the Bellarmine Bells, last season's champions. And you went to the UK over the summer or the uh, winter? No, over December, in December. Winter break. To uh, do some college interviews? Yes. And how long were you there? I was there for five days. I was traveling by myself. So Did that you was... meet some nice Londoners? And... Yeah, it was, yeah, it was nice. Yeah, Nobody was told good. you? They, no, they didn't swear at you? Right? <laughs> no, swear at me. the English have manners. <laughs> John Chi, you just came back from a school retreat before yes. starting your spring semester. And yeah. what was that for? It was just a, a time for for reflection, I guess, which is a good way to start off the new school year. For or all the of new us, semester. but maybe they felt that John, she needed to calm down a little bit. <laughs> no, you're a senior, you're all relaxed, right? Yeah. Namit, you spent a free day in New York when you had a stopover coming back from a trip. Did you go to the Chipotle on Fifth Avenue by any chance? No, I, I stayed to the safer parts at Times Square. Oh Empire yes, State. Times Square is so much safer than Fifth Avenue, <laughs> a shopping course. mecca of America. All right, well, I'm glad you guys all got a taste of New York. Let's get a taste of more Quiz Kids with our next 10-point toss-up. 
Although it's named the Cradle of Confederation, it did not join the Canadian Confederation until 1873. Which smallest of the maritime provinces? Yes, Brandon. Prince Edward Island. That is right. In the novel, Anne of Green Gables, which was referenced before you, but after you buzzed, what was Anne's last name? Edwards? No, it's Anne Shirley. <laughs> Next toss up. One river with this colorful name forms the eastern part of the border between Texas and Oklahoma. Yes, Das Ball. Red? Yes. For 25 points, the Red River of the North has its mouth in Lake Winnipeg in which Canadian province? Uh, Ontario. Ontario? No, Manitoba. Here's your next toss up. In its pilot, a waitress named Penny moves in across the hall. Das Ball. Big Bang Theory. Correct. For 25 points, which actor has won several Emmy Awards for his portrayal of Sheldon Cooper on The Big Bang Theory? Jim Parsons. Jim Parsons. That is right. And for 50 points, Parsons appeared as the human version of Walter alongside Jason Segel and Amy Adams in which 2011 film? Muppets. Muppets. You got 50 points. <laughs> You've taken the lead. Here's your next toss-up. This sea is named after the Dutch explorer who discovered the island of Spitsbergen. The Russian port of Murmansk is on, yes, Jared. Bering. That is right. For 25 points, despite its northern location, the Barents Sea is largely free of ice due to an inflow of warm water that originates with which ocean current that begins off Florida? Oh, okay. Gulf Stream. Gulf Stream. Gulf Stream. Correct. And for 50 points, using Russian canals, one could sail from the Barents Sea to which other sea that touches Sweden, Finland, and a namesake trio of former Soviet republics? Baltic. Baltic. Uh, Baltic. You got 50 points. Here's your next toss-up. Central banks typically set minimum requirements for these funds. What term refers to the money banks have on hand and have to... Yes, Brandon. Reserve requirements. That is... That is correct. For 25 points, what term refers to a bank's funds from shareholders or a type of home loan in which people borrow against the value of their homes? Mortgages. Mortgages. Yeah. Mortgages? No, equity. Oh. Next toss-up. Its spiritual center is Amritsar in the state. Yes, Jared. Sikhism. That is right. The Sikh religion, for 25 points, the Sikh religion progressed through 10 of these spiritual leaders, of whom the first was Nanak. What word has come to mean any teacher or master? Gurus. Gurus. Correct. And for 50 points, Sri Guru Arjan Dev Ji compiled which holy scripture of Sikhism in 1604? Adi Granth. Right. Adi Granth. 50 points. Correct. <laughs> Next toss up. He passed away shortly after his son was sworn in for a second term. From 1983 to 1994, which Italian-American Democrat was governor? Yes, Dasfall. Mario Cuomo. Correct. For 25 points, which Catholic Democrat and happy warrior was governor during the 1920s and lost the 1928 presidential election to Herbert Hoover? Al Smith. Al Smith. Right. And for 50 points, which Rough Rider served a term as governor before becoming vice president and succeeding to the presidency? Theodore. Theodore Roosevelt. That is right for 50 points. We have a good game. Westmore 130, Bellarmine 160. We will be right back after these messages. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's give a big hand to the coaches for both teams from Westmore, Mr. Alan Bronstein. And from Bellarmine, Mr. Chris Fleetis. Thank you for all your hard work, gentlemen. Uh, we could have a tie score here. We've got two strong teams. Today's categories are a capital idea, say again, and love, love, love. Capital idea. A capital idea. I'll give you the name of an Asian country, and you name its national capital. OK? India. Delhi. Delhi. Say it. Delhi. New Delhi. That's right. Vietnam. Hanoi. 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 That is correct. You now have the lead. North Korea. Pyongyang. Uh, Pyongyang. That is right. Turkey. Uh, Ankara. Ankara. Right. Saudi Arabia. Riyadh. Riyadh. Right. Laos. Uh, oh, crud. <clears throat> Phuket. Say Phuket. Defer to me. Your answer, friend. Phuket. No, it's Vientiane. And finally, Pakistan. Oh, uh, Islamabad. Islamabad. You got six out of seven for 310. You've taken the lead. All right, Bellarmine. 
You need five to tie and six to win. Will you choose Say Again or Love, Love, Love in honor of Valentine's Day coming up? Say Again. Say Again. Nobody wants love in this world. <laughs> These are all names that are or contain the same name repeated twice. Got it? It's the first name of the cellist heard on Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon's soundtrack. Yo-Yo Ma. Yo-Yo Ma. Right. It's the state prison in Ossining, New York. Sing Sing. Yeah. Sing Sing. Correct. They were the 1980s band that sang Hungry Like the Wolf. Oh, Duran Duran. Duran Duran. Duran Duran. Correct. It's the city in Washington State with a namesake Sweet Onion. Uh, walla Walla. I've been there. Oh. <laughs> yes. It's the capital of American Samoa. Pago Pago. Pago Pago. Pago Pago is right. And finally, you are tied. If you get this one correct, you will win the game. It was Tristan Zara's art movement prizing nonsense and intuition. Dada. You won the game. Good job, gentlemen. Westward, thank you. We'll see you all later in the season. We'll be back in just a minute. Thank you. Uh, last week, two teams won their matches and are back today to face each other. So let's meet them now. First, the Mission San Jose Warriors. <laughs> and the other first week champs are the Harker Eagles. <laughs> Welcome back, teams. Let's get started right away with your first 10-point toss-up. This region includes Ben Nevis, the highest peak in Great Britain. Anoop. Scotland. I need more information. Uh, Dartmoor? No, I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to finish the question for Harker and they can steal. Uh, this region includes Ben Nevis, the highest peak in Great Britain, and the city of Inverness. What mountainous region of northern Scotland stretches from Argyle to Caithness? The Highlands? Maybe. The I think it's probably Scottish Highlands. Okay. The Scottish Highlands? That is right. For 25 points, what five-letter term is applied to the estuaries and inlets of the Atlantic Ocean and the North Sea that indent the coast of the Scottish Highlands? Fjord? Fjord? Wait, what? Heath? 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 Might be, yeah. Fjord? Heath? Fjord. Probably Heath. Karen? Heath? Firth. Firth. The Firths. Like the Firth of Forth. Here's your next toss-up. He described an effort to build the airborne city of Cloud Cuckoo Land. Who was... Yes, Kelvin. Aristophanes. That is right. Uh, the comedy he wrote was called The Birds, and in uh, 1952, Daphne du Maurier wrote an, uh, had written a novel that inspired which director's 1962 film, The Birds? Hitchcock. That is right. And for 50 points, Konstantin Treplev shoots the title bird and presents it to Nina in which author's play, The Seagull? Oh, Chekhov. Yes, Chekhov. You got 50 points. Here's your next toss-up. It describes quantitative relationships among substances as they participate in chemical reactions. What is this branch of chemistry dealing with the relative quantities? Yes, Edgar. Doichiometry. That is right. Thank you for saying it so I don't have to. For 25 points, a basic law underlying stoichiometry, yes, is the conservation of which quantity in a closed system? Mass. Mass. I think mass. 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 That's right, Karen. For 50 points, the idea that elements combine into compounds in small whole number ratios is sometimes named for which English chemist who pioneered atomic theory? Dalton. Another 50 points for you. <laughs> well, your first 50 points, and we're close. 50 to 60, let's stop and say hi to the teams and let me get my, my tongue back from the stoichiometry. Kelvin, welcome back. Hello. You're involved in model rocketry as a hobby, right? Yes. So I assume you, you're building rockets that will shoot up, right? Yeah. They How's can, it going? Uh, they can go up to around 700, 800 feet, and wow. they come back in one piece without breaking. They come back in one piece without breaking every time? Most of the time. <laughs> Most of the time. Sometimes. All right. Well, good. Good for you. That'll be fun. Don't hit me. Uh, Karthik, uh, you're part of the cross-country team. Yeah, so... We had a good season, huh? Yeah, we had a good season. We placed second in our um, league, and then some runners went on to the North, North Coast section. Very nice. Very good. Good job. And Anoop, um, you're part of the robotics team, and you guys have come up with an interesting name for your team. So, yeah, we're the Pink Fruffy Unicorns. Where did that come from? So, actually, the team wasn't ours. Like, we got it when we were freshmen. It was actually started by seniors before we came to what the high school. What an inheritance. The yeah. Pink Frothy Unicorns. And you're all male. Yeah. Good. <laughs> That's a strong name for pink frothy unicorns. Harker, Nikhil, 10th grade. 
and uh, tell it you you just beat out another team in a in a history B, and uh, you found a great way to psych them out. How'd you do that? So after the match, we came by and we said good game and all that stuff. And because we had completely blown them out, the team asked, "How did you study? How did you know what to do?" Uh huh. And I was just very confused. I just looked at them and I told them. I haven't studied for this. That is very mean. <laughs> that is very mean, but very, very brave. Okay. Karen, um, you went to Ames, Iowa. How exciting for a conference. And the yeah. conference was for? Uh, future problem solvers. Okay. Which is... Well, you'll solve problems. What was Ames like? It was great. It was really flat, which is something that I've never really encountered before. That's the before. Midwest. That's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Edgar, welcome to our game. Uh, first time playing with us. You're a ninth grader. And uh, you were helping out with a middle school science competition the other day. How'd that go? Well, went pretty well. The, the, other, co the other coaches had to come up with this system. Of, you, know, you know how when you train cats, you use water? Uh -huh. Well, they sort of decided middle schoolers must be like cats. So they decided yeah. to use water. And they also had very bad aim. Which Thank God they had you there. Well... Uh, yeah, we just ended up spraying each other with water. Good. <laughs> All right, you guys. Let's continue with our game. We're very close. Here's your next toss-up. One losing candidate in this election had suffered a debilitating stroke, while another was appointed Secretary of State. Which election saw John Quincy Adams defeat Andrew Jackson in the House of Representatives to become president? Karthik. Election of 1824. That is right. For 25 points, Jackson alleged that what improper deal had occurred wherein Henry Clay received a cabinet post for swinging the House vote to Adams? Corrupt bargain. Right. And for 50 points, John Quincy Adams gained prominence for contributing to the drafting of what treaty ending the War of 1812? Gent. 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 Gent gets you 50 points. Good for you. Next toss-up. Joaquin Cortez performed in this style of dance. What's this form of Spanish folk music and dance whose zambra and cigarilla forms use castanets? Nikhil. Flamenco. Correct. For 25 points, the flamenco was first performed in which southern region of Spain that includes Cordoba, Granada, and Seville? Karen. The horn. Andalusia. Andalusia. Here's your next toss-up. In the 1820s, this man determined that the enormous stone zodiac found at Dendera dated to the first century BC. Who was this French linguist who deciphered Egyptian hieroglyphics? Yes, Anoup. Champollion. That is correct. For 25 points, it was discovered in 1799 by the French army. What object was used by Champollion to decipher hieroglyphics? Rosetta Stone. That is right. And for 50 points, what ancient Egyptian script appears along with hieroglyphics and ancient Greek on the Rosetta Stone? Demotic. Demotic? Yes, you've got to listen to a noob. You've got another 50 points. Thank you. <laughs> I see Karthik always shaking his head at you. I'm going, <laughs> no. <laughs> Next toss up. During the Peloponnesian War, this city experienced a coup in which its democratic government, Kelvin. Athens. Right. For 25 points, the 400 was a passenger train that took only 400 minutes to do the run between Minneapolis and which Midwestern rail hub? Chicago. Sure. Like St. Louis. Chicago. Chicago. That is right. You shouldn't listen to a new. <laughs> for 50 points, in the 19th century, the 400 was a term for the social elite in which eastern city? Oh, it's not Boston. Uh, <laughs> just do Boston. Okay. Carthage. Boston. New York. Oh. Here's your next toss up. This term is usually translated in English as supreme pontiff. In addition to being, yes, Nikhil. Pontifex Maximus. That is right. For 25 points, in 27 BC, Augustus created nine permanent corps of what imperial bodyguard and stationed them around Rome? Praetorians. Yes, the Praetorians. The Praetorians. That is right. And for 50 points, Augustus was succeeded as emperor by his son-in-law, known by what name? Tiber Tiberius, yeah. Different. Tiberius. You got 50 points. Good for you. <laughs> Next toss-up. Three of them have positive charge, and three of them have negative charge. Kelvin. Quarks. Right. For 25 points, what is the charge of a positively charged up quark, two of which are found in a proton? Two-thirds. Two-thirds two elementary charge. Two-thirds elementary. Uh, two-thirds. That's positive. right. For 50 points, what is the name of the subatomic particles comprised of three quarks? Oh, no, 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 baryons. Baryons, yeah. Baryons. You got 50 points. And that is the end of the round. We will be right back with the final round in just a moment.
Welcome back. Let's say hello and thanks to the coaches for both teams from Mission San Jose, Mr. Murali Bar Barathala. <laughs> and from Harker, Mr. Bradley Stoll. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, you guys, it's 225 for Mission San Jose, 120 for Harker. Harker, you're going to get first pick of our categories today. The questions are worth 30 points for each correct answer, and you need four to take the lead. Today's categories are building project, you can quote me, and signed into law. Which category will you choose? Signed into law. Signed into law. During the administration of which president were each of these laws passed? Okay? You're naming the president. The Peace Corps Act. FDR? Kennedy. 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 That is right. The Alien and Sedition Acts. Adams. 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 That is right. Uh, the, um, I'm sorry, I do need to say, ask for which Adams? Oh, John, John, the first. John, John Adams. Adams. Thank you. The Civil Rights Act of 1964. Lyndon Johnson. That is right. The Tennessee Valley Authority Act. FDR. FDR. You have taken the lead. The National Interstate and Defense Highways Act. <laughs> Eisenhower. That's right. The Reconstruction Act. Uh, no. No. Johnson. Johnson. Andrew Johnson. Andrew Johnson. You got it. One more. The USA Patriot Act. George W. Bush. George W. Bush. You got all of them right. 330. <laughs> well done. Well done. Parker has taken the lead, and Mission San Jose does need four correct answers to win the game. Will your category be building project, or you can quote me? We'll go with building project. Building project. In which state are each of these structures found? Hearst Castle and the Rose Bowl. Okay. Yeah. Yep. California. Correct. Monticello and Mount Vernon. Virginia. 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 Right. The Gateway Arch and the American Jazz Missouri. Museum. Missouri. Yeah. Missouri. You just need one more and you win the game. John Hancock Tower and Peabody Terrace. Illinois. No, it's Massachusetts. Oh. The Willis Tower, formerly the Sears Tower. Illinois. Illinois. And you've won the game. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you both teams for great play. Thank you for joining us. Please see us next week. I'll see you. Bye-bye.